Good morning, family. How you all doing this morning? Oh, let's try that again. Good morning, family. How y'all doing this morning? Let's, thank you. That's much better. Let's stand up and give God praise for he is truly worthy. Amen. Let's go. Put your hands together. break of day and hope we rise we speak your name we lift our eyes tune our hearts to your beat where we walk there you'll be with fire in our eyes our life's a light your love untamed is blazing out the streets will glow forever bright your glory's breaking through the night you will never fade away Your love is here to stay by my side And my life shining through me every day You will never fade away Your love is here to stay by my side And my life shining through me every day Wake within me, wake within me, you're in my heart forever. You wake within me, wake within me, you're in my heart forever. With my Fade away, your love is here to stay by my side and my light is shining through me every day. You will never fade away. Your love is here to stay by my side and my light is shining through me every day. Wake within me, wake within me, you're in my heart forever. You wake within me, wake within me, you're in my heart forever. God, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Wake within us, Father. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Why don't you guys have a seat really quick? We're going to get on with worship in just a moment. Wife, Gabrielle, can you hand me those real quick? 
I'd like to invite some friends up. Tommy and Joshua and Cedric. Come on up. These three gentlemen are taking their next steps in baptism today. All right, all right, with the hugging. Jeez. Sorry. Love, Cedric, love best. Tommy, all right. These three gentlemen have all said yes to Jesus in their life. Hallelujah. And so they are continuing on with what Jesus instructed us when we say yes to him, is we follow up with baptism. Baptism is um, not just a symbolic thing that happens in our life. Uh, it doesn't make you any more saved, but uh, there is an identification with Christ. And Paul writes that if we identify with him in his death, we also identify with him in the life that he has, in the new life. And so these three gentlemen are saying yes and joining into the, the family of God, into this family uh, through baptisms. And so we as a family are going to recognize that, embrace that, bless that. And I'm going to pray for them now. And if you would, like you were up here with them, would you stretch out your hand like you could reach them? Come on up, Marty. Oh, you're coming to take pictures, aren't you? No, you can do both, dude. Lord, we thank you for these three guys. Um, admittedly, things have not always been easy. But God, they have never been out of your sight. They've never been out of your reach. They've never been too far gone. You call, you redeem, you restore. And so at this time, Lord God, uh, we as a family celebrate them and what you've done in their lives. And we say yes to where you're leading them and yes to our place, going right alongside with them uh, in their journey. And so Lord, I ask that you prepare our hearts as you have prepared theirs. And uh, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're gonna do in all three of these men's lives. God, that their story would continue to reflect your glory and what you are doing. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give him a hand. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank for who you are, who you're making us to be. We thank you for being the God who parts the Red Seas, who renews lives. There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength found in your grace, your faithfulness my fortress over and over make way through the water walk me through the fire do what you are famous for what you are famous for shut the mouth of lion bring dry bones to life do what you are famous for what you are famous for I believe in you God I believe in you release your love inside of me unleash your power for all to see spirit come and fall on us over and over Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouth of lions Bring dry bones to life Do what you are famous for What you are famous for God of exceedingly God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible in you. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, 
more than we ask or think Lord you will never fail your name is powerful your words unstoppable all things are possible in you make way through the waters walk me through the fire do what you are famous for what you are famous for shut the mouth of the lion bring dry bones to life and do what you are famous for what you are famous for i believe in you god i believe in you there is no fear cause i believe Cause I have seen your faithfulness My fortress over and over Still in your presence, but the noise dies down. Lord, speak to me now. You have all my attention. I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing. But Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new so i surrender all all i want is to live within your love be undone by who you are my desire is to know you deeper Lord, i will open up again Throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for the touch of heaven Breath in my soul, or the life in my bones. There is no hesitation in your love and affection. It's the sweetest of all. Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new, so I. Surrender all All I want Is to live within your love Be undone by who you are My desire is to know you deeper And Lord, I will open up again And throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of heaven. have your way in me now I open 
open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. So do what only you can. And Jesus, have your way in me now. I open up my heart to you. Open up my heart to you now. So do what only you can. Jesus, have your way in me now. Oh, 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 Holy Spirit. Oh, My desire is to know you deeper And Lord, I will open up again Throw my fears into the wind I am desperate for a touch of Father, we need a touch from you. In Jesus' name, would you bend down, bend down your ear toward us this morning. Would you listen to the cry of our hearts? Our desire is to know you better. Our desire is to be known by you. Show us who we are to you. Show us who we are. Because a lot of the times, God, we get so wound up and entangled in the things of this world. And I pray for myself and everyone here, everyone that can hear the sound of my voice. May we be a people who place our minds and hearts on things above, where you are, where it really matters. Father, I pray that as we continue in service, that our eyes be placed on you. Jesus, your word says that in all our anxieties, that we are to cast those on you. And another good way for saying cast on is surrender. Jesus, may we surrender our anxiety over to you. I feel like there's many people in the room who are struggling with anxiety right now. It may be a relationship. It may be your health. It may be just, you know, friction in the home, uncertainties of many, many things, and that creates anxiety. And you know, the Bible doesn't shame us for having anxiety, but the Bible is an invitation to bring our anxiety to Jesus. He is, he is not upset that you're upset. And so, God, I pray that you would cause us to come into your presence with those things that trip us up and that makes us sad, that we will remember that you can do what we cannot and so no matter what that is, 
we as a church and as a body of believers, we surrender our anxiety to you, God. And we pray that you would pour out the peace that surpasses human understanding, a peace that doesn't leave us alone or forgets us or drops us, but a peace that makes us whole in both body and mind and spirit. Father, I pray for those that are struggling with their health, and just by a raising of your hand, you know, we're going to cry out to God because he cares for us. He cares deeply for us. Jesus, we pray that you would touch our broken bodies. May your blood flow through our veins. Your word says that by your stripes we were healed, God. According to your will, may you bring healing on our earthly bodies as it is in heaven. You know your people intimately, and I pray that you would look on us with compassion. Thank you, God, for hearing us. Jesus, we pray for our jobs and our occupations that no matter where we go, we would be kingdom builders, and that we would trust you. You are the one that gives us the ability to produce wealth, to produce money to sustain us and to help others in need. And so I pray that every person here will have a means of, of having a job and that we would all honor you with our jobs. Jesus, I pray for this church. I pray that you would continue to be with us, that we would be a church that is known by its love for you and for one another. Father, I pray against division. I pray that you would cause us to move forward faithfully, faithfully, God, until you come again, until we see you again. I pray for our city. I pray that the peace of God is upon our city. I pray that you would have compassion over Albuquerque, Lord. And we just want to commit the rest of our day onto your hands, the rest of service, the hearing of the word, that you would awaken us, awaken us when we hear your word spoken today. We thank you and we love you. And it is in Jesus' name that the church says, Amen. Well, I'm so glad you're here. How are you this morning? Okay, okay. You, every week. How are you this morning? Much better. See, you need to have your quad espressos before you come to church like I do. Anyway, thank you for being here. Welcome. If you're watching us on the live stream, welcome to Eastgate Church. I am so happy you made it. We're going to step into another kind of worship, and that is with our giving. And if you want to download an app, you can look at that QR code, and you can do so there. If not, if you want to give physically, there are envelopes in the seat backs in front of you. Go ahead and um, fill those out. Drop them by the door. And I just want to say, you all are faithful. You all are generous. May the Lord bless you. We're doing amazing things here, and it never ceases to, you know, surprise me. And, and, and everything that God does, he takes our little and multiplies it. And I just want to thank you. And right now, we're going to take a look up at the screen because we've got some announcements for you. So again, welcome to Eastgate Church. <laughs> Good morning, Eastgate. So glad you worshiped with us today. Here's some of the things that are happening around here. Are you ready to kickstart your life or get the tools to help you become the person that you've always wanted to, but you find yourself being inhibited time and time again by things that continually come up in your life, whether it be an addiction, whether it be something from your past or your childhood, anything in life that, that tends to show up and make it hard for us just to get through the day. Whether it be your spiritual life, your relationships, your mental life, your mental health, all of this stuff, Celebrate Recovery has the answers for you. It's Friday nights, the service starts at seven, it's over about nine o'clock. It is really life change. That's what we call it around here because all around us we see people who are going through not just the Friday nights, but the step studies and continuing to dig deeper and allow God to bring that stuff out of them that they've always known was there, but have had a hard time reaching. Celebrate Recovery helps you find how to get there. If you have more questions about Celebrate Recovery, you can see Pastor Georgina after the service. On the first Saturday of every month, we get the chance to feed the food sensitive people inside of this community. We have a mobile food pantry that is the first Saturday. It starts about eight o'clock. Um, every single month. We want to invite you to that. Whether you're needing food yourself or you're looking for a volunteer opportunity, our food pantry is a great way for that. It's a few hours on a Saturday morning, but it is well worth your time. 
You get to partner alongside people from the community, either in serving or get to serve the people who are in need. And so we want to invite you to that. Our next one is June 3rd at about 8 o'clock is when the truck gets here. We get ready to distribute. We're done at about 11, 1130. We hope you can see you then. We got a prayer night coming up on Sunday night, June 4th at 5 p.m. We want to invite you to that. There's no need to be intimidated or scared or apprehensive in any way. It's for all levels. We feel like prayer is a way for us to communicate with God, not just us to Him, but Him to us. And, and so this is a time where we corporately come together and we pray about things maybe that's going on in your life personally or maybe in this community or this country or the world. We just feel like prayer is an important part of the Christian walk. And when we come together to do that, it has even more power. So that's going to be Sunday the 4th at 5 p.m. Lastly, our Next Steps class is a six-week class that's beginning at the end of June. It's going to be starting June 25th. It'll be after the Sunday service each week for six weeks. I'm going to feed you. We're going to go over some important information about like who we are as a church, how to develop your spiritual disciplines, how to identify, use, and where your spiritual gifts fit within the context of what we're presently doing and what might be on the horizon of a ministry that we might be starting soon. It's also going to help you talk about your story to others. So it's six weeks giving you the next steps. And so we hope you can be a part of that. We got signups in the cafe. Uh, we just need a head count so I can get the right amount of food for that. Sunday, June 25th. Hope to see you there. That's all I got for you this week. Thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for pressing into the bigger things of God with us here at Eastgate. We appreciate you. We love you. Have a great week. Good morning again. Good morning. I'm back. Woo-hoo! I brought my uh, tissue this time. Um, if you remember last time, I got all that flack for sweating so profusely after getting out of the baptismal and rushing into here. So um, that's when um, the unnamed member you know, gave me all of the wave caps afterwards uh, because they thought they would help me from sweating. Um, and it, they will remain nameless, but their initials are Joel Chadwick, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I thought I'd try something else uh, a little different today because my wife, when she found out there was baptism, baptism, she said, do you have a towel for afterwards when you go up there? So I'm going I'm to I'm take a cold shower after and see if that helps. Because I, I do cold water. From, anybody else do cold water on purpose? Anybody? One, one two, three, four, five. Yeah, not, not many. We don't, it, there's nothing good about it. Like, I don't do it because I like it. I like what it does to me. I like how I feel afterwards. And if it keeps me from uh, sweating profusely and offending you, I, I try it. But so far, not so working. And um, just, just so you know, I'm trying. But I will, uh, I will gladly sweat every single week in front of you if it means people are continuing to get baptized. So uh, hopefully you can deal with it. <laughs> I, uh, I love this city. I love, I love this state. I don't, I don't know about you. Um, the more I'm here, the more I, I, I love it uh, more and more. You know, like you're aware that inside of this community, inside of Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, we got our own vibe, right? We've got, we've got our own slang. We've got our own accent, even. And, and we're not unique. Like, people from all over the country, they got, they got their thing. Like, Texans got their thing, y'all. You know? Um, that's a totally Texan accent, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> born in Texas, I guess I can do that. Uh, Californians got their thing. Uh, New York, you know, the whole I'm walking here, you know, type thing. Uh, they got their thing. But um, the other day, I was here in town, and I just, uh, something about my ear, like when I hear other languages, some languages um, are more pleasant to my ear than others. Like for whatever reason, even since I was a kid, when I ever hear Russian, it, I, I like the way that sounds. Um, or that African language with all the clicks and pops, you've heard this one? Um, that one always intrigued me, but this week I found out that we do that too, here. And so I was walking out of the store, and there's two employees that are talking to each other by the door. And as I'm walking by, I glance over at one of them, and she's looking at her phone, and she says, ooh, forget it. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm like, I got so proud in that moment. It was, it was perfect for Kenyo, and a, a tear welled up in my eye. And I led her to Jesus on the spot. Um, I didn't. I didn't lead her to Jesus. That would have been a great ending to the story, wouldn't it? I, I, if I'm honest, 
I wish I would have more endings to stories like that, where follow through with something and there was a response and a reciprocation and, and somebody gives their life, like, that would be fantastic, right? Uh, I, I think around here, if you've been around this church for any amount of time, especially in the last couple of years, we talk a lot about revival. We talk a lot about um, things like the Jesus movement and, and, and the next one and that's and, and what that would look like. In my opinion, those things look a lot like that, where more of our stories more often end in somebody coming to faith or somebody allowing a prayer or reaching out or just an opportunity for God to do something and then him showing up and changing people's lives. I, I think that's what that looks like more and more often. But there's a couple things in that story that keep us from experiencing that. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about uh, us as a church, kind of what he has called us to, and just the trajectory of this whole thing. Because if, if church for you is just a place to come on Sunday mornings where it's fellowship and people aren't like uh, proactively like, dragging you down, they might be encouraging you, or you might uh, be inspired through worship or the message, or just what, if that's your thing, uh, cool. I, I hope you keep coming. Ultimately, this is about knowing Jesus. This is about experiencing the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives and what that looks like on a day-to-day, regular life kind of basis. How do, we, how do we tap into that? How do we do that more? Next week uh, is the 28th, and that is what is known as Pentecost Sunday. It happens every year, about seven weeks after Easter, um, but it's kind of special. The movement that we're a part of, uh, Foursquare, started 100 years ago. It turns 100 years old this year. Um, And the reason this church exists is because that church exists. I'm going to be in L.A. next week, Sunday morning on Pentecost Sunday at the very first Foursquare church. That church was a result of of a very special move of God called Azusa Street. We weren't the only ones to come out of that, but we were one of the ones to come out of that whole movement. So there's there's something very connected to who we are as Foursquare and the moving of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, the Spirit moving in our lives, that sort of thing. And so next week, as uh, people from all over the world will be at Angelus Temple there in L.A. uh, for the 100th anniversary and it being Pentecost, uh, to say I'm excited is an understatement. I believe and I'm hoping that God is going to continue to do something. Like this year has been um, inspiring in a lot of ways. If you're really paying attention to what is happening in pockets all over the country, uh, God is doing something very spectacular. People try and associate it with end times, last days. You know, I I don't, honestly, I don't don't know about that. Um, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just not saying I'm convinced. What I am saying is, though, I'm grateful for what God is doing. And I want to rejoice in that, and I want to celebrate and acknowledge it and not poo-poo everything that God does that he happens not to do in this specific place. Does that make sense? So I'm going to be gone next week. You're going to be in good hands, but um, I'm I'm a little excited about my opportunity next week, and I'll share with you when I get back about the things that happen uh, as we go to uh, not just that service, but our denomination has a a yearly uh, connection, they call it, conference. Uh, the, the week of Memorial Day. And so we're going to be there at the Anaheim Convention Center with people from all over the world. Ten, I mean, 15,000 people gathered in their traditional wear and just multiple languages being translated. It's such a cool event. And it being the 100th anniversary, I am excited to see what is going to happen as we do that. But today I want to I talk about that thing, that what does, how do we get to that point where we're seeing things that we have to start to struggle to find out a term that it fits, if, it, if it's outpouring, if it's revival, if it's um, newness, what, whatever, whatever that is, how, how do we get there and, and do we have anything to play in that? That's, that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, because here's what I believe, if, if things are as far along God's timeline As some people say, not that I'm one of them, again, I'm not saying that they're wrong either, but just if if it is, if it is, if we are deep into the timeline when things start to look like they get crazy, when you start to read some of the books in scripture like Revelation, you read some of that and and we associate that last days and there's uh, some colorful things going on. 
If we are truly that far into it, if we are really going that far, then I believe, this is my thing, I don't think Jesus limps into the end. That's, that's not my, my personal opinion. I, I think that we walk confidently towards that point as a church. If, as we are going to that point, and if they're right, it's going to be sooner rather than later, I don't believe that it's going to be led by people up front on a stage with a microphone like some of the moves in history have been. I believe that the next big move, and when we're talking about like end time stuff, I think it has a lot to do with people in the seats. I think it has to do with the church. And in some, in some kinds of schools of thought, they call that the saints movement. I fully embrace the idea that what God is going to do next is through common, everyday people who say yes to Jesus. People who are willing to take a chance. People who are willing to say yes where maybe they traditionally haven't said yes before, whether they're stepping out into an area that's unknown or they've had just a series of things to build up their confidence to where they progressively get more and more bold and say yes more often and more quickly. Whatever that looks like, I think the end type of thing that God is going to do looks more like that. But if we look around the church today, I don't know that we can say we're there, can we? We're not there. I think we can be there, but I want to talk about what that looks like today as we get ready. Question for you as we, as we go on. Do you think a Christian can prepare? Is that something that some, a Christ follower can prepare for, that sort of movement of God through their lives? For me, it's not yes or no. For me, it's yes and no. Yes, in some ways we can prepare for that. Because in, inevitably, already, Jesus is speaking to you. If you are a follower of Christ, we, we believe what Scripture says, the Holy Spirit is present in your life. Like he's, he's not just sitting there hanging out. He's talking. There's a dialogue going on. There's direction going on. And whether or not we say yes, I, I think we get there by um, saying yes in little things. And building up confidence. Confidence in that we're hearing correctly, like knowing what voice is what, that, that, that can be a process. But when we say yes and we're seeing God's faithfulness show up time and time again, how many know it's easier to step into the next thing that may be a little bit more challenging because we now have a track record to look back on to see his faithfulness and to see him showing up time and time again. So in that regard, I would say yes, that we can prepare for God to use us in that way. But no, we can't because inevitably, from time to time and, and more than once, what Jesus asks of us isn't necessarily a small thing. And a lot of times, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than we think we can do. It's bigger than we, we have confidence in ourselves. It's bigger than we have confidence of God working through us in a lot of times. And so we are afraid. And so we're shy. We, we don't step out for whatever reason, and so we don't. And, and when he asks us to do something big, that's way beyond anything we prepare for. I don't know that you can ever prepare for those things, but it's just a matter of saying yes. But even though the answer to that question is sometimes no, that it's going to be overwhelming, I think we're always going to be better off when we are willing, confidently, and boldly saying yes to what Jesus is asking of us in our lives. You with me? So there's little steps that we can do in that. How do we get there? How do we get to the point where we say yes quicker and more often to the Holy Spirit prompting in our lives? That's what we're talking about today. So in order to get there, I want to backtrack just a little bit from where we are now to Acts chapter 2. We're going to pick it up in the first verse, and we're going to read this. It says... When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, like a, a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and the Spirit, as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. 
When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard in their own language being spoken. Now, as I read this scripture, and as I've traditionally read this passage throughout my life, I've typically thought there's one thing happening in this passage. One, now, albeit big thing, significant thing, but what's happening is I see one thing. Now, I don't read the Bible like I always have. If I'm going to be honest and transparent for a second, a lot of times through my life, through the first part of my life, when I read the Bible, it was more like a textbook. I'm, I'm absorbing information and just holding on to it, almost clinical in the approach. But in the last few years, uh, I've started to change how I read the Bible. I've always said, you know, context is what's important, but really context and empathy have opened up the Bible for me. And what do I mean by that? Because when I, when I read a scripture, it's, it's easy and a little bit um, irresponsible to automatically think everything that happens then would be how it happens now, and it's not, or the reasons that some things are happening then or would be the reasons they're happening now, and it's not. So it, it's important to, for context, but in that context, I, I start to read passage, and instead of just reading what the text says, I ask myself if, if, if I'm in that person or I'm watching what's happening with this person, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? is, am, am I happy with God? Do I know God? Am I afraid? You know, these types of things. And when, when you start to humanize a lot of the people within Scripture, because at the end of the day, they are human, with the exception of Jesus, they are human. And so it, it, it's, it's very easy to relate to emotions because although we have different specific things that happen in our life, we all generally deal with the same kinds of emotions, the same sorts of identity issues, the same sorts of, of fear and trepidation, like all, all this, that, that's very common. So when, when I start to read, it, I start to ask myself, what, what is the subtext saying? And I've found that a lot of times there's just as much life for me in the subtext as in the text itself. And so that's how I read the Bible. So I, I just want to say this, like if you read scripture like, or you've tried, and maybe it's been really dry. Maybe you haven't really been able to get into it. You don't understand what all the fuss is about. Possibly. Um, read less volume. And concentrate more on a story and, and ask yourself, what, what am I doing here? What, 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 would I, what would be the emotions that are happening here? What are going to be the thoughts? What are going to be the struggles? What are going to be the things that are great? What, what do they have on their side and what's up against them? If you start to do that... I believe the scripture will become more alive for you. So if you've been struggling in your reading, I would suggest maybe trying something new there. For me, it's, it's levels. It's levels of understanding, levels of being able to identify. And so I just wanted to give you that as we go on. So as I was reading that passage in Acts chapter 2, throughout my life, I saw one thing happening over and over again. Um, but then something else popped out to me. The one thing that has always popped out to me is that it looks like God is sending his spirit into the church to do the work that he has called them to do. And that's absolutely going on here. That's absolutely what's happening in Acts chapter 2 in the first six verses. God is promising and sending his spirit to, to do all of the things because we cannot do it on our own. He's sending the spirit to give power to the believers to be faithful and to follow through with what he's called them to do. He's stirring boldness and inspiration uh, for the followers of Jesus to go out and to preach boldly, to talk boldly. But at the same time, that he's doing that, I've noticed a second thing. While the Spirit is moving in the room with the guys that are gathered, the Spirit is also doing something with the people in the street. And I hadn't really seen that before, but it's right there. It is right there. He's stirring up questions and curiosity in people. They're, they're, they're dumbfounded. They're wondering, what, what is this that's happening? What's, what's going on? I don't, I don't recognize this. This is, seems so odd, but there's something to it because they're speaking in my language. 
God is already preparing their hearts, and God is already working in them at that time. Um, so he's preparing the church to speak, and he's preparing people outside the church to hear and to listen. He's preparing both groups for what comes next. I want to bring up a friend of mine. I've done this a few times recently, and I think this is important. Mr. Joshua, come on up here. All right. Like the wind. All right. Come on up here. What's that, brother? You good? I'm good. Yeah? You all dry? How come you're not sweating? You're not up here yet. Okay. I'm not here yet. <laughs> now, Joshua, um, for the people that missed uh, the first part of the service, you got baptized today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, um, but God has already been moving in your life. Before we get there, kind of fill us in on your origin story. You grew up in a big town? I grew up in a small town. What town? Chimayo, New Mexico. Chimayo, okay. Yes, Metropolis, right? It's, it's <laughs> huge. Yeah. Um, is there much to do in Chimayo except get in trouble? Mm, not really. So what kind of path did your life take before finding Jesus. What, what a, just give us a kind of a brief look at what that looked like. You know, where I grew up, the statistics were you either want to become a drug dealer or a drug addict, or uh, especially if you didn't have a dad, the things where you wouldn't graduate. There's a lot that I heard growing up that I uh, started to believe. And did you find yourself falling into those same things? Same things. Yeah. Of both. <laughs> For about how much of your life? A good part of it. A real good part of it. Um, I ended up going to jail for something I didn't do. And in that process, I believe God sent me a person to talk to me. I thought he was going to go wanting to fight, but a really big guy full of tattoos. And I just came from seeing a visit with my, my kids. My middle son was probably about four years old. And when he was seeing me through the glass, he was punching it, you know, mm. taught him how to fight since they're little, you know, the scares of the world and trying to defend yourself. So he was trying to punch the glass and it broke my heart. Yeah. And uh, I went back to my cell and I went to my cell, I was crying. For the first time while I was in there, I was crying. And this big dude comes up to me. And so, you know, I jump up because I don't want to think, yeah, yeah. you know. Got to handle business. Yeah, so uh, jump up and he tells me, no, 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 don't worry about it, it's cool. And so you just saw your family, didn't you? Mm. I was like, yeah. So uh, I had an uncle that would always give me lectures that I always looked up to. He was in the army. He was a ranger, very strong. He got murdered around the same time. So my life really started taking a, a toll into those statistics. What, what did faith look like in your life up until that point? Faith um, really wasn't any, um, especially with my uncle passing the murder. But when this gentleman came to me, I mean, it was almost like my uncle speaking through me. You know, he told me about being back and forth in the revolving doors, you know, making sure to be out for my family. So even when I got out, I had to make a hard decision. I have a cousin that we've always been there for each other. And my ex, she's like, you know, I told her about it. And so when he called that, he needed backup. And it wasn't the kind of backup that you just it could be anything. You don't know if you're going to live after that kind of backup. Yeah. But we would always have a business together and do what we had to do and make sure we were the two walking away, no matter what it took. And so it's safe to say that up until that point in your life, um, you weren't this evangelist kind of Christ follower out there just kind of bringing I, anybody in that you could, right? I of God, but I did not follow him. I didn't read my Bible. Uh, my parents were probably getting me into church here and there. I didn't believe, um, especially with everything that was happening. You know, I even told me, you know, if there was a God, why am I going to jail for something I didn't do? Mm. I mean, how could you let that happen? And how could you let my uncle get killed when my uncle was, a, he wasn't a perfect Christian, but, you know, he considered himself a Christian. He went to church, he drank, but, you know, he, uh, he tried, he tried with me, you know? Yeah. So let's fast forward a little bit. 
Um, when did you meet Jesus? Uh, I ended up meeting, meeting Jesus in jail that time. And uh, I got closer to him, so I got closer to him when I got out. Things got hard throughout the years. What year was this? 2004, 2005. Okay. So, you know, I tried, uh, but it always seemed easier to fall back into some of my old ways just to just to make it by. Okay. So that I wasn't having to do certain things to make it by. Okay. So let's fast forward a little bit. Um, you've been with us for three years? Three years About three years? Okay, cool. Three years. Um, three years ago, you came in and uh, joined in with, with a group that we have, and uh, I started seeing you around, and um, you were by yourself. Uh, in, in, in terms of family, you were, you were by yourself yes, attending um, and started to attend on Sunday mornings. And I always had this smile and this, this air about you uh, that was very friendly and open and welcoming. And uh, it, was, it was easy to connect with you right off the bat. But even in that time, in three years, which is relatively a short amount of time, uh, I've seen you grow in, in, in some big ways. Uh, you're, you're, you're the type of, of Christian that I think that we all need to be where um, you love God, you love the church, you love being here, but you also love being in the community and sharing about that with people. You're part of a car club, right? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that. Um, and you know, it's kind of crazy the way God works sometimes. Uh, there was an event where there was a car club I wanted to be with, and I guess God kind of put the brakes on that. Okay. It didn't happen, so I didn't think nothing like that was gonna happen, especially with the style of work I do. So I, you know, finally gave up and said, you know what, God, um, use me how you want to use me. Um, it's a little scary. I'm still learning when to, when I should talk to people, when I shouldn't. Try to listen to God more. Uh, when to have more courage instead of having the courage of when. You know, somebody came and trying to take you out, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So it's. Um, so all of that is built and kind of snowballed into this thing where, just before Easter, there was. Um, it wasn't a car rally. What, what was the thing that you went to? We uh, did our first annual thing for Good Friday, uh, where we helped feed the community to try to give back a little bit. Up in Chimayo. Up in Chimayo. Oh, we started. A, my uncle started a chapter there, but the car club where that we joined, which I mean, I believe God blessed me with because uh, their motto is God first, okay. love, honor, and loyalty. So you asked me for some things for that event. Uh, for What'd you ask Bibles, me for? For some Bibles. For some Bibles, why? I believe God was putting some stuff on my heart to speak to people at the time and to make sure we didn't forget about what that day was about. You know, because that's the day, uh, as our belief is, you know, when uh, Jesus walked up before he died on the cross. Yeah. And before he was resurrected. So and instead of falling into it being about Easter, you know, we really wanted to. So I got moments here and there, still a little scared, still learning. I handed out a few. We handed out a few Bibles. Um, Prayed with people? A couple, yes. Awesome. Um, what are you learning about God or Jesus in this process? In this process that I'm learning that the more I give it up to him and try to let him stir me, I'm, I don't have no control over nothing, no control over myself or over my life. But the more I give it up to God and the more control I give him is, you know, I'm noticing there's sometimes there's things that I may not think of, um, like especially with this car club and these people that gave me encouragement. Uh, you know, I even talk to one of the person and tell me, you know, God was putting in my heart to do a little bit more, like to, we had a stage to get up on stage and talk on the full stage in front of everybody, yeah. but I kind of didn't get time to do that. And right. I kind of got a little scared of <laughs> stage fright. Yeah. And I got, I mean, because a lot of chapters were here from different uh, areas of New Mexico and out of state. And they told me that if whenever I want to, if I wanted to stop the concert and get up there just to talk about you, I could do whatever I want and they all have my back. That's awesome. No matter what, especially when it comes to, if it came to messing around or doing something yeah. dumb, no, nah, I'll be kicked out. <laughs> right. But they'll hear about God. But if they'll, they'll hear, definitely hear about God and Jesus. And now, you said something I, I, I don't want to correct you on, but I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. You said you didn't have any control, but um, in some ways, yes, there are things that, that God asks of us that are bigger than us, that, that it's his power working through us. 
but we all have the ability and the right to say yes or no, right? Yes, we, got, we got a small amount of control in that way. We can't control our lives in terms of what happens to us all the time and, and all the details. And all. We don't have like that kind of control, but we do have control about where we set our intentions and our affections and um, what we're saying yes so to. So, so look, I, I just wanna say this, I, because I, I don't want you to sell yourself short. You're saying yes, yes. when not everybody would. You are, you are allowing the control. It's that whole laying down our life and, and compromising maybe things that would be normal for us and saying yes to even the hope of God working through us in some way and getting some glory out of the situation um, just from us giving that. Yes, just from saying yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I even got one of my members that come up and... Uh, which started making me think about rededicating my life and re-getting bap uh, getting baptized. Uh, I had a member that came up and, you know, he's, we talked a little bit and uh, he wants me to baptize him. And uh, I honestly, there's times where I'm saying yes and I feel like I'm moving forward and sometimes I feel like I don't. But the more I just give it up to God and allow God and try not to be scared or worry about what's going to happen or what the outcome's going to be, um, it's just, it's been so amazing just in the different ways he's shown me, like something that popped up, even the, that popped up that I didn't think was anything to happen, the big event we did, the people that are in it with me are, are wonderful people. I mean, it's, it's like when it talks about God being in abundance, right. it's definitely abundance. My daughter's done a complete uh, 160. 180. 180 yeah. or whatever. She's almost there. She's 160. She's not quite there, but yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> My sons are coming, uh, but I started noticing that it was it was hard a uh, hard thing to swallow too at right. the same time noticing what I thought I was doing right as a parent or preparing my kids for because um, it could be a cruel world and it could also be a beautiful world. I noticed a lot of stuff I was showing that wasn't so great. Yeah, you talked about. Um your family here for a second. And, and like I said in the very beginning, when you first started coming around, it was, it was just you. It was just me. It was just you. Um, Rosella started coming around and, and, and Juliana, even after that, um, we baptized Jaden and Juliana and Rosella just a couple weeks ago. Yes, like your family, um, what that thing that God was doing in you is, is spreading. I don't, I don't know if it's because of you, but it's definitely, uh, as far as what I've seen in terms of like, I, I think you sell yourself short too, because if I know anything about families, like they're watching dad, you know, because sometimes you can say one thing and act another, but when you start backing up and, and, and living what you're saying, does this work, Abigail? I'm, my daughter, I'm asking, uh, you know, uh, as a parent here, you know, when, when they can start to see that it's real, you know, and that there's life. Don't, like, you're bringing your family along, brother. That is I know it's God. huge. That is huge. And so the fact that you just say yes and you're, you're, you're allowing him to work through you, even in what you may think is some big ways, but I, I, I tend to think that the bigger opportunities are still to come. Yes, and sir. you're saying yes and you're building up this um, kind of attitude that whatever he says, I've seen him be faithful and work it in times past, so I know he's going to do it again. Yes. And so uh, as a family, I, I will say it, and I know that there are plenty of people here that will echo it, that we're excited to continue to watch what God is going to do in your life, believing that um, he is present. And he is moving in you. I know he is. Are we grateful for Joshua and, and for what God Thank is doing you. in him? So Would it be okay if I prayed for you real quick? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, my wife is coming. We are calling an audible. All right. Do you need a microphone? You just pray. Wait, what? Okay. If you hand the mic, you got to be careful. Okay. <laughs> um, we've just learned. We were in a prayer meeting, and I remember God giving a word about your, God using your family. And I remember me saying, I think there's been murders in your background. I remember saying that. And that, you know, um, that God was breaking off generational curses off of your family. And I just see like God is putting a circle around your fam family, like a ring of fire. And he's protecting you. Um, but you may know that when you start to make a stand for God, the enemy also comes against you. And I know that um, even when I was with Jenny at this prophetic conference, I was telling her, I'm like, I just want God to protect your family because I sense the call of God on your family. Yeah. I sense that the influence 
that your family's gonna have to bring others to Christ. But sometimes when that happens, we also become a target for the enemy. And so, and you're not defeated. You are more than a conqueror. Yeah. And you are overcoming. And it's not, and we don't overcome everything all in one day. I'm still overcoming. John, I can tell you, he's still overcoming. <laughs> <laughs> We're all overcoming. So, you know, it's, it, we don't arrive until we come into the gates of heaven. But you're taking your family. You're on a journey. Remember Noah? He put his family in the ark, and, and he, his family got saved. Salvation is for your household. Mm. And so we're going to pray because I know I sense, I sense the spiritual battle mm. over your family. But we want to see your family fully come into the kingdom and, and to be protected. So, yeah. So, Lord, I thank you, thank God. You. I thank you so much for the Ortega family. And, God, we know that the call of God is upon this family's life. But we also know that the enemy works in ways, and he comes in through the back door to cause confusion, to cause things to, you know, just attacks. But, Lord, right now we claim that God for protection for blessing. And I feel like the Lord is just showing me that there's been condemnation, but God, we, you, we do not walk in condemnation. Though a righteous man falls seven times, the Lord lifts him up. And what God cares about is that you keep walking forward to the calling and you press forward to the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you for a protection and health over this family right now and for resources and blessings you say that the steps of a good man they are ordered of god and you delight in his way lord may you plan their steps order their steps open the right doors and close every wrong door even when it comes to things such as an employment god put them with good bosses and good people that are going to uh you know financially help them get to where they need to be lord bless their vehicles bless their household we command a blessing and any avenue that satan has to this family we close that door through relationships mm -hmm. through different things right now we close those doors and god i just ask you that you plant them in places where god that they will come into the fullness of the calling of god on their lives and thank you lord for everything you're doing in that in their lives may you be magnified and glorified through the works that you're doing in their lives in jesus name amen 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 Let's give him a hand. What's up? How about it, brother? Oh, thank you. I think it's great. Uh, um, if you remember, if you were here a few weeks ago when Aaron Cater was here and I brought him up, uh, he was all bikered out, and, uh, which I loved because I, I, I knew not a, not a lot of people knew that I was going to ask him up here. And... Uh, Inevitably, I'm guessing that some people maybe saw him in the in, inside of the room, like during worship, and wondering, well, you know, what's the story? What's you know, what's this? And then I ask him up on stage, and uh, he looks the way that he looks, and then he starts to articulate about how God is leading him and using him and, and starting the ministry that he's a part of, and doing all these different and crazy things, and. Uh, just, I, I'm sure, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands and front yourself off, but I'm sure there was somebody in the room that, that had to um, check themselves about how they uh, thought he was going to be and how he actually was. And uh, over the last few weeks, we've heard some stories. I mean, Juliana is 16 years old, and um, what she shared was fantastic. Uh, what she shared at the prayer night the week before was just even more so. It was just like this shotgun. You guys have seen... Forrest Gump, um, you know, in Forrest Gump, how they tell the story, how he always, like, finds himself in these extraordinary situations, you know, throughout history, and he's just like, he's there. That was kind of like what Juliana was saying, that God just, it, time and time again, started putting her in these situations where she's starting this club, and she's doing that thing, and she's talking to this person, she's being bold, you know, just time and time again, and she could not stop because of the faithfulness of God just over and over again, but she's 16 freaking years old. And we see people like that where... We, we discount sometimes what God can do through them. I think a lot of times because we look in the mirror and we see ourselves and we discount what God can do through us. And so it's easy to project that onto other people, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that what God wants to do, it's not going to happen from a person behind a microphone that has a large church or a ministry or anything else. It's going to come from people who are just willing to say yes 
But what he does is he works through us. He's preparing us to speak, but he's also, more than we realize, preparing people to listen. So if God prepares us and God prepares the world, then what is our part to play in it? That's the question, right? Hopefully, that's one of the questions that you're wrestling. What's, what's my part to play in it? What am I supposed to do? Two big things today I want you to take away. The first thing, not super spiritual, uh, just very gut level. Dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is present in your life. That's number one. Just just dare to believe. Just like, not just hear it from somebody up front or sing the songs about the Holy Spirit, but actually and genuinely believe that when you say yes to Jesus, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now present in you, 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 all of you, the same Spirit, what is possible? That if we just dare to believe that he is present with you. In fact, Jesus says this about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14. He says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you for how long? Forever. This is really the first time that Jesus is talking about the sending of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. And I find it really interesting that as Jesus is introducing the Holy Spirit... He, the first thing he talks about is not how big and powerful the Holy Spirit is, although he is. He doesn't talk about an emotional response or goosebumps that you're going to get when he comes upon you, although you might, and some of you might have already in a worship service or at some time you just get into the, the, the chills and you're like, what is that? He may work that way. But Jesus doesn't say, that the Holy Spirit is big and powerful, or they're going to get all the goosies. What he says about the Holy Spirit is that he's never going to leave you. First thing he says, he wants you to know no matter what happens, when you feel it and when you don't, he's with you. If you read your Bible today or you didn't, he's with you. The promise is, and what Jesus wants us to know in that moment, is that the Holy Spirit is present and will never leave us in our lives. And this means that there's going to be days when we feel it and days where we don't. But hear me out. The Holy Spirit is not with you because you feel him. He's with you because Jesus promised he will be. Sometimes you just need to add a little extra faith into that promise of Christ that he is always going to be with you because there's some days I wake up and I feel more like he's with me than others, but he is no less with me than others. It's just my understanding and my willingness to accept what is already true, what Jesus already said, that he will never, ever, 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 ever leave me or you. He's going to be with you forever. If we say yes, if we dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is promised in our life and that he is present in our life, I I want you to know that when you do, even in your quiet times, even in your dark times, even in uh, some kind of emotional experience, he will be there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And that's Um, I think that's where we start at, and that's as the church where we go out. The message that we bring and the confidence that that drives us is this understanding that he is always going to be with us. So the first thing that I want you to do is dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is not a lie, that the, that the Holy, not, not to believe that just that the Holy Spirit is real, not just to believe that the Holy Spirit is in a, a person in ministry or that elder or this person that you think is so spiritually mature or whatever else, but that the Holy Spirit is present in you. Number one. Number two. It sounds maybe kind of trite, but trust me, this is far bigger than it sounds. Get out of the boat. Number two is just get out of the boat. Step out of the boat. There's a story in Matthew 14 that probably most of us have heard where the 12 disciples are in the boat and they look out and they see Jesus coming towards them walking on the water. And there's this conversation between Jesus and Peter where ultimately Jesus just tells him, come out, come out. Now, we need to place ourselves in Peter's shoes here for a second because Peter was a fisherman, 
Hopefully you remember that. Peter was a fisherman. Matthew 4 said he was a son of a fisherman. He's been in this generationally, which means if he knew one thing, he knew that in order for me to travel across the lake, I need to be in a boat. He's grown up knowing that. He's done it most days of his life at this point. He is assured of one thing, that you need a boat in order to move across the Sea of Galilee. But that boat wasn't just a structure that's sitting on top of the water. Metaphorically, that boat is his safety zone. It's our area of security. It's the place where we have full control or feel like we have full control, just like Peter in his boat. What's beautiful to me is, though, is that when Jesus approaches Peter, when he comes to Peter, he doesn't tell Peter, Get all your stuff together and then come to me. What he does is, from the very first time, he gets into the boat with Peter. He gets into Peter's place of safety. He gets into Peter's place of security, the place where he thinks he's in control. Jesus goes to where he is, in his place, in his fear, and doesn't uh, call him out of that place just yet. He comes to Peter on Peter's terms, not demanding that Peter take this big leap of faith. He's just present there. And Jesus comes to Peter inside of the safety zone, inside of his security, and builds up this rapport with him and this friendship with him because eventually the relationship grows from that very first meeting until the time where he sees and the other disciples sees Jesus walking on the water. Jesus has already put emotional and relational investments into the account there. He's already built up the kind of rapport. Peter's seen him do the miracles. He's seen him uh, do all these different things. And so there's a level of faith and confidence that has been built up in Peter, adding up to the point where Jesus says, now come out. It wasn't the first time they met. But there was a series of things that happened to where it got to the point where Jesus calls to Peter. He says, come. Come. There's nothing wrong with your experience. Come on out. There's nothing wrong with the boat. Come on out. There's nothing wrong with the area that you feel like you're in control, but I'm asking you to come out. There's something more. And that was the thing. See, when Jesus calls us out, it's not, although ultimately it is for his glory, but a lot of times it's to show us something more. So that we experience something more. How many would you like to experience more of God in your life, more power? Like when you pray for somebody to see a healing, to have it take place, or somebody to say yes to Jesus or their life to be changed. How many of you like, like on the regular to have those kinds of moments where you step out of the comfort zone and for that moment you're walking on the water? You said yes. You let go of what was comfortable, what was safe, what you were in control of, for the possibility of experiencing something more. And in order to say, see more, you've got to take a step of faith. In order to do something you've never done before, so you can do something you've never done before. You've got to say something you've never said before so that you can see something you've never seen before. I don't know what your boat is today, and I don't know where you are with the Lord, but one thing that I do know about your life, like I know is is with mine, that if you stay with Jesus long enough, if you walk long enough, there's going to come a point where he says, I need you to step out. I know you don't have this all in control. You're stepping out there. But there's something more I have for you. There's something of life, not just for you, but maybe through you for somebody else. It's going to come a time, I promise you. And we can build up, like I said, the little wins that add up to progressively more boldness and more obedience that we experience God moving in our life. But there will come a time where you're stepping on ground that you don't feel real sure about. And you're going solely in the confidence that he's asked me to do this. I'm going to trust him. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit's going to come. He's preparing us to be able to share about him, and he's preparing people to be able to listen. But when those opportunities come, we've got to dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is actually present in us. And when we feel that check, I I don't know how you describe that thing when you feel like God is speaking to you. For me, it's a check. 
there's something just stirring. It's like this area. I don't know. I don't know why I keep referring to this. I feel it here. I feel it here. It's my gut. Um, and when God asks you and pulls you to do something else, something bigger, to step out of the boat, where are we going to be at? When we start talking about words like revival or some kind of secondary Jesus movement or something where the lost come back home, those that have, have been separated um, now see Jesus for who he is and not necessarily who they've known him to be. I think when we as, a, as believers recognize the Holy Spirit and just trust that God knows what he's doing, he does the miraculous. I want that in your life. I want you to experience that in this time. But I, I believe if we're ever going to get to that point, that church that we read about, that thing where he's not limping into the end, he's actually going in with victory and the church is right there with him, that whole right there with him, those people, I have a feeling they say yes to Jesus kind of on the regular, where they built it up, a sense of trust and confidence and boldness. This is what I am already seeing. Yesterday at our women's uh, brunch, uh, we had a guest speaker here, and typically, you know, that goes from about 10 to 12. They're still praying for people at 2 o'clock. They're still ministering to people because God is starting to stir things, even inside of here. And I know we can look around the room, and, you know, we came into this room. I'm not getting into the whole story of this church. At one time, this was filled years ago. Stuff happened. God did stuff, and it, and it shrunk down. But even in the pockets that it is, where we're seeing growth and we're seeing life, we're also seeing the miraculous. We're seeing people's lives changed. We're seeing healings. We're seeing restoration of marriages and relationships. We're seeing all of this. And I feel like that's just something that's a precursor to more that's ahead. But that comes when we corporately and together dare to believe that the Holy Spirit is present with us. And that collectively, more and more, at a larger percentage, we're people who are willing to get out of the boat. It's not easy. You can't do it alone. I mean, it's super tough to try and do that alone. We, for each other, is a blessing from God. That's how he set church up, that we can encourage one another, that we can spur one another on. We can be generous and loving and merciful. Like, uh, we get enough beat up throughout the week. God has set it up here for restoration and healing to take place. I want you to have the fullness of God in your life. If you want that in your life, pray with me now. And even if you have that desire, if you put your hands out like you're wanting to receive, like you're wanting God to give, even while I'm praying uh, as, a, as a symbolic gesture to uh, that thing that you're desiring at this moment, daring to believe that there's something more than you're currently living in, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. Uh, for your church. I thank you for the spirit that you sent to us, your spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And I'm just asking, Lord God, that in this moment, in this time, that we, one small part of your large body, we get to understand, recognize, move with you more and more. God, we, we are faithful. We want to be faithful to you because of what you've already done. Like what you've already done is so much but God, we do want to experience newness and new life, new miracles, new restoration, new answers to prayer, God, that we've maybe even put onto a, a shelf and forgot about and thinking that you just don't have time or that your answer is no. But God, maybe your, your answer was just not yet. God, would you remind us of those things so that we can keep that in front of you, that we can continue to contend, that we can continue to ask um, for that face, that family member, that friend, that coworker, that, that student at our school, Lord God, that we've been praying for. Uh, help, remind us to keep them at the forefront. And Lord, also remind us that you've placed your spirit in us that gives us words of knowledge and wisdom that allows us to pray for the sick, that allows us to speak about what you've done in our lives with full authority because it's our story and what you've done in that. God, that we would see people put their faith, their life, their trust in you. That you would allow us to be a part of what you're doing in this community, in this city, in this state. God, in, in our little microcosm of, of everything else that's going on, that we would be faithful, we would be a church that would be faithful to the great commission, knowing that it's by your spirit and that you promised it. And so therefore it's true that if we move, we're going to move in the power to do what you have called us to do. 
God, if there are areas, I, I, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that also brings conviction in our lives, that at times uh, brings us to walk away from things that are maybe uh, keeping us back, keeping us from fully engaging or saying yes. God, would you give us the strength and the clarity to know what those things are and to acknowledge that uh, your, your spirit is present to help us in that process and you've placed people around us to help us in that process. Would you continue to move in your people? God, we so much want only what you have promised. And those are things of life. Those are things of, of restoration. Those things are uh, things of liberation. And so, God, we look to this. Help us to reflect you more in our lives and to the world around us. I thank you, God, for my family here today, my brothers and sisters, the ones that are, are new to faith, the ones that have been walking for, the, for a while, the ones that are uh, taking their next steps all the time. God, there's so much uh, health and progress that we want to celebrate and thank you for, because ultimately it's from you. But God, uh, at this time, help us to know you. Help us to know that your spirit is present, knowing that you will be faithful to do everything that you said to do. We just need to step out of the boat. So we thank you, Lord. It's in your power. It's in your name. As your sons and daughters, we pray. Amen. Church, it's time to keep going. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of the stories that we're continuing to hear. And that's why I've tried to bring some of the stories up here. Because ultimately, I get to hear these things like on, on, in conversations that happen off to the side. But um, uh, hopefully, you're appreciative of hearing some of these things that are happening inside of your family, inside of this church that God is doing. And so I want to continue to highlight things that God is doing because it's not about me. It is totally about what he is doing through us. And so... Uh, I hope that you're enjoying that. I hope that you're appreciating what God is doing. If this is your first time at Eastgate, we want to say welcome. There are some connection cards in this seat in front of you. If you fill one of those out or if you text the word welcome to 505-295-2463, you'll get some prompts. And if you fill out those prompts and show them to the people at the, the hospitality desk right outside here, we have a gift for you just to say thank you for being here. We're glad you're here. If you've got other questions today, maybe about faith, salvation, the church, you know what, uh, anything. We've got some people back here in this overflow um, that can help connect those dots. We have prayer team people that uh, are ready to talk with you. If you need resources, if you need a Bible, if you've if you got questions, um, that is a great place for that. They love you. You're not slowing down their day. Take a moment and uh, hang up. Joel's back there by the, by the entrance there. Just pray with somebody. Just talk with somebody to know you're not alone, that we're here for you. We want that for you. And so I um, hope you can be here next week, Pentecost Sunday, as we continue on. Pastor Georgina is going to be sharing with us, and uh, it's going to be good. So with that, would you stand as we get ready to dismiss today? just like to give you a blessing if you're here for the first time and that blessing today is this may you be full of the, the power of the spirit within you may in these days you be blessed and may you know the blessing that is ahead of you may you be confident of the plans and the purposes that God has for your life and may you be confident of the resources and the presence of the Holy Spirit to accomplish those plans and purposes in your life May you find boldness where you found fear. May you find courage where you've been afraid. May you step out in the ways that God is calling you that you may see his goodness in the land of the living. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us today and being here. We love you. Meet somebody you haven't met yet. Say hello, and if you're on your way, have a great day. We love you.